Morning, Julia. Um, Sasha, um, <laughs> again, so many people keep making that point. And ever since Monday, we've been talking about uh, this on air because it is such an issue. Um, explain to me why the four week delay to the 19th of July even though people can already go to the pub but even sit indoors and all of that, why that is making a massive difference to not just going to the pub, not just the pub industry, but a huge number of industries that you've been talking to. Well, you, you're quite right. You know, up until I think last Friday when the leak started, people were listening to what the Prime Minister was saying. And he kept saying, didn't he, that he couldn't see anything in the data to, to move away from the 21st of June. So they were gearing up to open fully this coming Monday. Let's not forget those pubs and restaurants that you see. They're operating mainly at 50% capacity. Most of them are actually making a loss. One in four are still not open. At nine in 10, we're gearing up for Monday. So when I saw this coming, Julia, I thought, you know what, we've all been screaming. The sectors that have been hurt the most have been screaming for help, screaming for a date, screaming for certainty. And I can't sit by and continue you know, the last 16 months, I've seen people lose relationships, lose their houses, their businesses, their jobs, people's mental health that I keep talking about is in tatters. So this is now not just about hospitality. Now I've brought together events, weddings, travel, tourism, exhibitions, and we have sat down with the team that I used to compel the government to drop the substantial meal rule. Do you remember the Scotch egg that we all thought was absolutely yeah. ridiculous? And today we are putting the Prime Minister on notice. We are working today together, all these sectors, you know, many, many trade bodies who are responsible for their members, who really care for their members, like the Nighttime Industry Association, What About Weddings, Luke, who you had on this morning, Luke Johnson, Hugh Osman, we're all putting the Prime Minister on notice together to say, do you know what, we're starting work today and we've, we've stuck to this roadmap, but the 19th of July is a cul-de-sac and we're coming back and we're going to look at every single challenge possible. We now need to open up. Well, the 19th of July, we're told by the Prime Minister is the terminus. We've been told previously this is all irreversible, um, but they, they won't give a guarantee we're not going to go back into these measures again in the autumn or winter when cases inevitably will rise, seasonal endemic viruses, etc., etc. I mean, that's the big concern, isn't it, for a lot of people, that 19th of July, it is an ending. A lot of people are predicting in terms of case rates around the country as the Indian variant spreads, even if it doesn't lead to uh, large-scale hospitalizations and certainly not large-scale deaths, thanks to the rollout of the jab, that, that we will actually be at the peak of cases um, around the 19th of July and therefore we carry on in the 19th of July but you're saying you're going to use the same sort of tactics you used to get rid of the 10 p.m. curfew on pubs which we know now is utter disaster uh, and uh, and that scotch egg rule so so Covid won't kill you if you're having a pint with a substantial meal but it will kill you if you're having a pint with a packet of crisps or no packet of crisps I mean genuinely absurd random stupid made up laws uh, just to make our lives a little bit harder and publicans lives a bit harder but 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 you're saying that you, you did a judicial challenge there. You didn't actually succeed in some of the challenges you've tried in terms of like, getting hospitality opened up indoors uh, along on April the 12th, the same as retail. But are you hopeful that with all of these industries coming together, with the multi-billion pound weight of those industries coming together, everyone standing together, that you can succeed? I am extremely confident. You know, you're quite right. I've had two judicial reviews. The first one, we got them to drop the substantial meal. The second one I did with Hugh Osmond. They played a tactic where they just timed us out. Yeah. But, you know, my, my wallet isn't that, that huge. You know, these industries coming together now, there are some people in there with big, deep pockets. And, and yeah, we're coming together. And I think it makes sense, doesn't it? I think people, quite frankly, have had enough. We need our freedom back. You know, we, I saw yesterday... The shambolic news, and I know you commented on it, tens of millions of pounds were spent on these Perspex shields oh, in the pubs and the restaurants. I actually think there's a case that we should all come together and sue the government because we know that's done more harm than good. I really and and, and again, I would like to know what was the evidence for doing that? My my office, we're absolutely, we can't move for Perspex screens. There are Perspex screens around desks which haven't got another desk near them for about 10 metres. It's, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. It really is. And then again today, you know, talk about 19, 19th of July. You know, they will allow employees to work from home. Well, I'm sorry, I'm an employer. I will decide where my employees work. And actually by saying that, by that messaging, 
they are killing off the city centres. And, and the bigger the city centre, the harder it's going to be to recover. I've always said this, you know, London, Manchester, we need to start to encourage people to come back into the city centre. Yeah. You know, there's so many businesses that, that live off those people in offices. If you think about the lunches, the drinks after work, transport getting in there. I don't think they know what they're doing. I, I, do, really th I do think this is a really big issue. The civil servants and the medics uh, and, you know, the psychological advisors on stage, make, you know, advising and, and on policy. Again and again, we've, we find out, you know, oh, hospitality has to be closed. Big, big, uh, uh, big, big place for spreading the virus when they discovered it. Wasn't it under 3% of cases they could track back uh, to your hospitality? Um, yes. And again and again, we've told things like that. But also, I just think they just, A, they don't have the evidence for a lot of the things they do. And, and B, um, they, they don't understand the interlinkage so of, of of the economy, and so they don't understand that. So yeah, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people not going into a, a, a central cities, not just London, say Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, everywhere. People not going into city centres uh, means a massive impact. You say the sandwich makers, uh, the taxi drivers, the cleaners. There are so many jobs that are uh, that are reliant on people's movement to and from work. Um, and there just seems to be a total lack of understanding of this. And of course, the help, even when they have help for a, a you know a publican who can't open up, um, not helping all their suppliers, not helping their cleaning company, not helping the the cab drivers who pick the people up who are leaving the pub, uh, the, the, the 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 shops who were selling the clothes to people. Go, oh, I'm on a big night out, I'm, or I'm going to a wedding. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a new outfit. There is there is just a whole economy resting on us leaving our homes and not living in sodding pajamas on Zoom, and yet the, the whole of why. Whitehall seems to think that the rest of that the world can go back to PJs and Zoom forever. They don't understand this. They don't, and this is not just about money. They do not understand. And again, I keep mentioning these two words: the strain on people's mental health. We need to get out. We need to go to a restaurant. We need to go to the pubs. We need to, you know, weddings. One, one person I was speaking to yesterday, she spent sixteen months. Booking, cancelling, booking, cancelling, booking, cancelling. Not earned a penny, but she's never worked as hard before in her entire life. It is not fair. And I don't think I'm wrong in thinking and feeling that we now have the vast public behind this. I think this is where people's heads are at. 19th of July, enough is enough. And I see, I saw what you did before, Julia, and I would actually completely reiterate that. I'm done. This is it. We're moving on. And we've brought the team back. We've brought the band back. We're the going band's to back together. The, uh, the band's Lord. back together. Uh and uh, we're confident. I, I, I wish you the best of luck. You are fighting for, I know, millions and millions of people's lives and liberties and jobs and livelihoods. And I just think you've done a magnificent job.